Inu wa mikono yako to lift those hands to Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. How fun it is! Nakitu kingi ne. Tell him, tell him from your heart. Tell him from your heart. How fun it is! Nakitu kingi ne. Nakitu kingi. Zeme dari wa vita. How fun it is! Oh, oh, oh. Nakitu. Mueza yote. How fun it is! Father, we bless your name and we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. Someone lift your hands above your head and give God praise. Hey, come on, somebody. We give you praise, oh God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. Uh, can you high five your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, are you ready to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Let's do this. Can you say up? Can you say up? All right. Now this one is a testimony. Come on, come on, come on. Give me that one more time, bro. Somebody give me praise. Hey.
and appreciate you you are a good god you are lifted above all other gods none is like unto you we ask that you accept our praise this wonderful afternoon and even lord as we have lifted up our praises we pray that god you will descend and answer prayers move doors shift destinies be glorified in our lives each one of you uh, to this lunch hour today I trust that the Lord is going to speak to us today. We, let me see whether maybe we are going to have some demonstration. Uh, we will trust God for some demonstration. But by tomorrow, uh, yesterday, we will see you in the lunch hour. Yes, so by tomorrow, I think we are going to be having some time just to pray uh, for people and open up the portals of heaven and trust God for prophetic impartation. Is that okay? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, don't miss it. Yes, so we are believing God that that will be able to take course. I will once again want to honor mom who is here together with bishop who is in absentia. Please help me to appreciate the Lord for them in the precious name of Jesus. Every pastor, we want to say we honor you and all the leaders of this assembly and every man of God that also constantly partners with this lunch hour. May the Lord bless you big time. I, I want to proceed. Today is my birthday. Guy Maso. Thank you. Yes, today is my birthday. Keep it coming. No. Yeah, thank you so much. Basically, I'm just in my mid 40s. And I appreciate the Lord for the grace that he has been able to give to me. Amen. God has been good to me. My family watered me. I ran away at first when I saw them planning. They are scheming. I drove out in a hurry. Amen. And by the time they, I came back, Kumbe Tena walikuwa mepanga njama na mbili kabeba kiboko ni kisema mujaribu. I'm able to give you direction in how to hear him. That is far much more better. Is that okay? Than the notes that you can be able to write. Now, this last part, when the Bible speaks about the cool of the day, suggests that God's voice always comes in moments. It comes in moments. The word moments there is a suggestion of two things that I want to bring about. The first one uh, that it actually suggests to us is that God, uh, let me not say basically two, uh, uh, two portions, but let, let, me, let me break it down. Let me say that it demands that we need to master God's voice. You can write that down. And it also demands that we need to discern the voice of God. Okay, we must ma master the moment, no, rather not the voice, moment, master the moment, and secondly, discern the voice in the moment. So that when God is actually coming at that specific moment, you can be able to know that it is him, and you can also be able to master the moment in which he actually appears. That's why the Bible speaks of the cool of the day. Now, there are various ways to discern the voice of God. I will major on one today, and then tomorrow we will proceed. The first way in which you can be able to master or to discern this voice of God is through personal dealings. Personal dealings. And that's what I want to just build on even today. Under personal dealings, we are going to be looking at two very pertinent things. Number one, the first thing that we are looking at are the watches God creates for you as an individual. Watches. W-A-T-C-H-E-S. Watches. The watches that God gives you as 
an individual. Secondly, we are going to be looking not only at the watches, but the preferred way God likes speaking to you. The preferred way. There are very many ways that God speaks. But to every individual on the face of the earth, there is a preferred way that God is inclined to speak to people. So let's begin with the first one, which is the aspect of watches. The Bible from Genesis Revelation indicates eight watches. Eight watches. Muslims usually observe only five watches. So you will find a Muslim, particularly three of them that they are very clear of. You will find a Muslim at five in the morning observing a prayer watch. You will find them observing a prayer watch between 12 till about two. And you will find them at about five till about uh, six or seven. They will also observe a prayer watch. Uh, when you pursue the Jewish people, they have five that they actually observe. But the Bible indicates eight of them. So the question would be, what is a watch? So let's begin by writing what a watch is. Okay. A watch is a moment that the heavens are open, okay? A moment that the heavens are open and ready for transaction. A moment in which the heavens are made open and they are ripe and ready for spiritual transactions. Now, please understand that prayer was intended for uh, what we call transactions and not just intimacy. The way that God organized prayer, he intended that every time that we get into prayer, he wants us to have that moment to have deep interaction with him in order to establish certain factors as relates to life. In Exodus chapter 14, we can look at the scriptures and verses number 24, we see a watch that appears. Exodus 14 and verse number 24. Uh, if we could look at the scripture, it says, and it came to pass that in the morning watch, somebody say the morning watch, Say it aloud, say again, the morning watch. He says it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked. So God is always active during watches. God is active during watches. Daniel chapter number 4 and verse number 17. Again, we see not only does God look into watches, but God calls us to be watchers. All right, And they are also what we call angelic beings that are also watchers. But in this context, we look at ourselves. He says this matter is by the decree of the watchers. It's by the decree of the... It's on the screen. Talk to me. It's by the decree of the... So there are people we call watchers. In this specific scripture, Daniel was dealing with angelic beings. But I want you to understand that even as a believer, one of the mandate you are given is to be a watcher. Jesus, while teaching on prayer, let's remain in Daniel 4.17 because of something I want to pick there. Jesus, while teaching on prayer, said that you should watch and pray watch and pray he never went in a hurry to say pray first of all and then watch so effective prayer is when you master your watches after you have mastered your watches then you can now pray prayer is the release of the arrow the watch is the mastering of the moment that you need to release the arrow are you following me here so for example let's go to one scripture then we come to daniel 4 17 when we look at romans 8 and verse 26 we understand the importance of watching now in romans 8 and verse 26 the bible says likewise the spirit also helpeth in our weaknesses our infirmities our limitations then i want you to look at what he says here for we know not what underline that statement what so god is not really interested in only teaching us how to pray because the result of prayer is what we look for and not the length of prayer you can pray for 10 hours and it's only an exercise in futility you can pray for 30 minutes and you can command results in a very supernatural way now am i trying to demean long prayers no i believe in long prayers long prayers are necessary for particular reasons one of them is a proof of your love and value for god you pray long because you want to stay with longer with the one that you love. If you love God, you will spend 10 hours with him. Please give me a louder amen. The one you love is the one that you spend more time with. Are you following me here? So lengthy prayers, number one, are symbolic of the aspect of value and also the aspect of love. And there are other reasons. But God didn't just call us to pray for length. God called us to pray for results. Do you understand me? He says, until now, in John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking. He says, until now, you have not asked me anything. He said, ask me, John chapter 16, another, ask in my name that your joy might be full. So every time you ask in the name of Jesus, God will ensure that your joy is full. How is your joy full? Through the answers you receive. When you receive results, you are more excited about loving God. Many people are always discouraged about serving and working with God because there's no results in their life. So in John 16, he teaches you that the value of prayer or the power behind prayer is your joy begins to overflow. But now back in the book of Romans 8 and 26, before we go back to Daniel, he says what we ought to pray for. The what there means the target that you are hitting. Now only when you watch. So when he says the spirit of God is helping, the spirit of God broods in your heart. Okay. 
Are you following me here? He broods in your heart. Then he opens to you what you need to pray for. As you begin to deal with the exact factors, you command the results. So Daniel chapter number 4. Just stay with me. I'm taking you somewhere. Daniel 4 and verse 17. He says, this matter is but the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones. So we are watchers and we are holy ones. Look at what he says. To the intent that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men so men ought to know that every time you pray god is in charge they ought to fear your prayer because they know when you pray god answers if people mistreat you anyhow and they know you're a believer it means they have never seen any result in your life but anytime people handle you carefully and with fear is because they have seen god answer you that like mordecai when haman is planning to kill mordecai to kill his family and to kill the jews all of a sudden things turn around and that is what will happen to you in this season if you believe it shout aloud amen right here so watches a critical look chapter number one from verses number eight gives us another story to verse 13 verse 10 will be my emphasis just stay with me now this is zachariah who has gone into prayer and for a long period of time they have never seen an answer and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before god in the order of his course according to the custom of the priest's office his lord was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the lord look at what he says verse 10 just stay there for a while and the whole multitude of the people were doing what Shout it loudly. We're doing what? Finish. And he says what? At the? At the? So there is what we call the time of incense. In the Jewish culture, in Exodus 30 and verse 1, there are always two dimensions of the time of incense. It is given incense in the morning. They burn incense in the morning. And they burn it in the evening. So this was a watch. Now notice, as long as they were in that time, look at verse number 11. Look at what happened in verse 11. We continue. Whoever is behind the computer. He says, and there appeared unto him an angel. Just because it was the right time. Because it was the right time. An angel appeared standing on the right side of the altar of insights. Look at verses number 12. And when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Verse 13. But the angel said unto him. Are we there? Zacharias, for thy prayer has been what? God can hear your prayer if you pray at the right watch. Now write this down. There are eight watches. Watch number one is 12 midnight to 3 a.m. Just stay with me. I want to teach you. It's a prayer watch. Now why I'm taking you through this course of journeys because I will try to help each one of you see where you're actually operating. Watch number two is between 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. That is the second watch. There are some of you, God delights to give you midnight prayer. You can't sleep. You sleep at around 2 or 3. That's why you're in the first prayer watch. There are others by three sleepers disappeared. So you find yourself in the second prayer watch. Tap your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, where are you? Where are you? Tap the other one for me. Ask him again, neighbor, where are you? <laughs> then there's a watch from 5 to 7 a.m. Okay? 5 to 7 a.m. That is also a third watch. I know some of you like settling around there. Are you understanding me? Then we have a fourth watch from around 7, okay, till about 10 a.m. in the morning. That is also a prayer watch. Each one of them in the Bible has a specific name, but I don't want to give them the names because that's not my interest for today. Then we have a watch which starts from 12, like what we are doing in the lunch hour, until 2 p.m. Now, each one of these watch, if you study the Bible, has symbolism. Now, I would encourage, because I can't teach everything here, if you can find room just to go to my YouTube channel, Pankras and Gira, you could get them. Just subscribe, hit notification, and then you will get all these things I'm teaching. I've taken time just to teach it. So, there is the other one, which is, which am I in the fourth or the fifth one? Fifth one, which is between 12 to 2 p.m. Now, let me explain. This is where Muslims understand this. Now, the thing that I want you to understand between 12 to 2 p.m., without people noticing, if you study the Bible, this is where there were actually greater breakthroughs, more than ever before. Between 12 to 2 is when breakthroughs, the Bible says, my prayer shall ascend as insights. It's biblical. I just don't have time to show you. Are you following me here? And that's why Muslims will never attend to you. A genuine Muslim, even if he's doing business, at Taifunga and in the Mount. Are you following me? All right. The next one is between 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. That is a six prayer watch. Okay. 
That is when Jesus was actually crucified. So anytime you want to deal with your flesh, you can actually exercise prayer at that time. And the other one is between 6 p.m., just stay with me, all the way up until 9 p.m. That is where there's a lot of revival. That's why revival meetings are usually held in the evening. Anytime you attend an evening meeting, you are sure to experience a revival. Believe me. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor there's a revival in the evening. Tap the other one, tell them again, neighbor, there is a revival in the evening. Then there is a last prayer watch, and the last prayer watch is between 9 p.m. to 12 midnight. So there are people between 9 to 12 midnight. That is when God settles on them, and God begins to quicken them in prayer. So why am I beginning with talking to you about these eight prayer watches? Please stay with me. The reason why I'm starting to show you this is because all of us seated here, God has a specific prayer watch he has ordained for you. All right? If you hear me say, I hear, I hear. It is only during that specific watch that God is readily available to do transaction with you concerning generations. For example, if you ever want to break generational battles, if you ever want to overcome battles in your bloodline, if you ever want to establish judgments against demonic forces, you do it between 12 to 3 a.m. That is when God descended in Egypt and God began to kill all the firstborns of Egypt. A young lady who had actually been in a family where there were seven, six, uh, seven girls, six girls, and she was a sixth one. And uh, all of them, none of them had gotten married. This particular lady was about 30 to 35 years of age. And uh, she had been going to an Anglican church, not to say that it is anything wrong to go there. But in that particular church, they don't teach majorly on prayer. And she noticed that none of them, her and either of the sisters who were above her, had actually gotten married. And uh, their parents had died, they were living with their grandmother. So one day she decided let me go and at least seek uh, God in a different church so she attended mountain of fire you know how they pray when she went to mountain of fire she had the man of God teach about midnight prayer and when the man of God was teaching about midnight prayer he taught about how you can pass judgment and establish laws against forces that may be hindering you concerning your next level the man of God went ahead and taught them about full body prayer full body prayer is where you pray releasing everything are you understand? No, no, no. There is one you pray and you're shaking everything. And so she heard about that. The lady decided to fast for three days. Within the three days of fasting, she decided she would be praying according to the timeline. At 12 to 3, she was laboring in prayer. When she prayed the first night, this is a true story. All of a sudden, the next day, the grandmother came and told her, I overheard you pray last night at midnight. And the lady said, yes, I was. And she went ahead and told her, please don't continue like that. Somebody might die. So that's when she was surprised that the grandmother could confess. True story. So the next day, the lady continued. By the third day, they found the grandmother dead on their bed. On her bed. Now what was amazing is that when they were doing the burial, as they went to clean up the, the room, they found a padlock. The padlock was closed and in it were six uh, blood-stained clothes. Zimefungu andani. Kumbe, what the grandmother had done is that she had gotten into a covenant of prosperity by taking the, the, the destinies of these six girls. So when they began to menstruate, alikuwa nakata nguo, anaenda nafunga. Anakata, anafunga. So as long as their destinies are closed, alikuwa meamua hawata wayoleka. The story goes that when she died, after the burial and cleaning up the place, not long after that, just like a month after the lady got a guy, and they got married three months after that. All the sisters that were above her were getting married married one year after the other because something was judged so what am i bringing about you must study your watch now how do you know the watch god has ordained for you remember we have come from the cool of the day the first way is that during that particular time you become spiritually aware i want you to write down these things please i'm helping you that is when you become more spiritually alive there's an energy you have you cannot be able to explain there is a strength that comes on you. You cannot be able to explain. Number two, how do I know my spiritual watch? How do I know that this is my watch? It is when God withdraws sleep from you and focuses your mind on particular things. So even though you are trying to sleep, every time you try to sleep, you're thinking about something and you're troubled about it. Now, unless you wake up to pray, that thing will remain in your head. How do you also know that that is your prayer watch? Number three, there is a grace of prayer that comes on you. Please, if you are hearing me, say, I hear, I hear. There is a grace. You just begin to have a certain grace to pray. And that particular time, if you tap into that moment, you will pray more longer and more powerfully, more than ever before. Are you getting something here? Number four, how do you know that that is your prayer watch? The fourth way is that there are moments you will be more spiritually heavy, more than you usually are. 
So for example, there are times if your watch is at three, Sayondo me amushwa na Holy Ghost, Uta notice when you wake up, when you go to pray, it's as though again sleep is coming against you. Now the reason the sleep is coming against you is because the enemy doesn't want you to do the transaction. So let's get a scripture to explain. In Genesis 15, we have God talking to Abraham. The first time there's a discussion about the hair. Because God, Abraham tells God that I can't have a child. So let Eliezer take the child. Are you with me? So God says, no, it will come from your loins in Genesis 15. And then God says to establish it, we will make a covenant together. So God tells him, get an animal. Just stay with me. Divide it into two. In the culture, uh, in the Jewish culture. Okay, let me get two people. Two people just to come. Both of them standing on one side and the other one. Please just stand here. Facing. Uh, yeah, facing. The other one here. In the Jewish culture, when two people were actually making a covenant, they got... Uh, if it was an animal, you divided it into two. When you divided it into two, you allowed a pathway. There was blood poured in. So how you made the covenant is you had to walk through that particular blood. Are you following me? And that is when now you initiate the covenant. Now, God told Abraham we will make it. Now, because God is God, the Bible says in Genesis 15, uh, a fire appeared and went through and consumed it. Are you still with me here? I'm talking to you, so I need you to follow me. But what is amazing is at that same time in Genesis 15, Abraham had a cloud that came on him, and he began to feel very sleepy. Sometimes I've ever come to lunch hour, and you, when you arrived here, when you praised, you were alive. But when the word began, kuna kausingize kana kutaftang. Have you ever been there? Or in the church at between 9 to 10 when you attend service. You are okay. And even when you woke up, you are quite okay. But the moment you stepped out of your house, it's as though you are feeling sick. It's because Satan discovers a watch. If you read Genesis 15, because of that sleep, follow me very well. All of a sudden, God had to change his mind. God told him, your descendants will go to captivity for 400 years. So which means initially, if Abraham would have fought the sleep then they would not have gone into captivity. So that's one of the reasons why you shouldn't play with your visitations. If you play with them, it means you will weaken generations after you. If you hear me say, I hear, I hear. Abraham, the Bible says, had a dark cloud that came on him. And when the dark cloud came upon Abraham, he began to sleep. He had to fight it over time and chase away the birds. That's what he says. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep. Some of you, kuna kausingizi kana kutafutanga. Do you know that is symbolic that that is a time God really wants to do business with you? That time. So what do you do? You have to make a decision to do warfare. So for example, kama wewe ndio ule mtu unapenda kulala, kuomba kama umekaa kwa kitanda, na hiyo wakati unaanza unaanza kukemea Yesu na karibisha shetani. Ushaona usingizi kama Say, Lord, I rebuke you, Satan, where are you? I welcome you. And then you sing is in Okonayo. So what do you do? At that time, if you notice a sleep is coming because God wants to do business, come out of your bed. Just begin to walk around. Even if you can't pray in tongues, play music, do something to activate that moment. You will notice just about 10 minutes after there is an energy ita kuingia. Now utapata anointing moja ya kubreakthrough haujawa yona. Na kama wenda ule mtu uko na hiyo shamba ya kuomba pole pole na unasahau mapepo za Africa they are deaf. Okay? They don't understand English. The African demons if you do, they are not like the English one. The English or American one the fathers are dealt with them. So if you say in Jesus name please go, they understand. But the African one ask James Nanga atasema kunywa damu. Na kusambaratisha na kama ni pius muiru na ku are you understanding me? So what am I saying? There has to be an aggravation on the inside of you. If you and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes wake up, just begin to shout. Hey, I am blessed. I am blessed. Thank you, Jesus. And shake off the sleep. In that action, you are actually making the watch become clear. And it is that moment that his voice becomes clear. Do you understand me? Because if there's anything, thank you so much. If there's anything the devil will do is to fight you during your watches. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor you have to overcome that. Now, there are three watches that are corporate. The one between 12 to 2 is a corporate watch. That's why we are all here. So in this corporate anointing, we can agree and break through. Just under this anointing, miracles can happen. That's why you have to learn. When you didn't get a breakthrough in the morning, come for the corporate one. In the corporate one, you will find grace that at night you will have a revival to pray again. I don't know whether you've ever been there. 
Yeah, you, you did it. You tried to break in prayer. It didn't work. When you come for the corporate one, you will notice flames exchange. In the process, that fire is what you carry back again. Are you following me? Another corporate one is the evening one between six all the way to nine. That's why missing evening meetings like the Wednesday. Well, what do we call it, ma'am? Wednesday. Breaking camp or the Monday one. What do we call it? Huh? Aaron and Hood. Every time you miss it, you are missing something that can shift you to the next level. Are you still following me here? You have to build it consciously. Indians know it. By five, they know watches. Indians understand by the time they open up their shop at about seven or eight, the first person that buys anything they buy, so that the entire day is controlled. Because it's called witchcraft. They crafted something to manipulate your mind to spend money. You couldn't. Are you still with me here? So master your watches because when God wants to speak to you, there is that moment. So my question is, which one is yours? So corporate one is 12, corporate one is 6. Are you still with me here? And corporate one is also in the morning between, is it 9? Did I say 9? Was the one for 9 there? Between 9 till about 11. That is also a corporate one. That's why you cannot miss a Sunday service. Oh, please tap your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. Every time you retain that, it helps you. But the other ones are very personal. 9 to 12 midnight is personal. 12 to 3 a.m. is personal. 3 to 5 is personal. 5 to 7 is personal. Please give me an amen right here. These are all personal. Now, why am I teaching you all this? I want to give you this information so that each one of you can say, by the way, pastor, I've been sensing God has been waking me up at this time. That is how God wants to start talking to you. I've been sensing God has been calling me to begin to respond to him at this particular time. It's when God's voice will become clear to you. Please listen to me. It's not difficult to hear God. The most important thing is to master the time he wants to speak to you. Number two, the second level of the aspect of personal dealings is to also discern the way God prefers to speak to you. I want you to stay with me. I'm not really interested in preaching. That's why I don't even miss out on anything. Master the way God prefers. There are different ways God speaks. So let's begin first of all with the mental senses. In the mental senses in which God will speak, he speaks through dreams. Write it down. Are you following me here? He speaks through visions. If you hear me say, I hear you. He can also speak through ideas or thoughts. That is the first way that God can deal with you. God can come through visions. And there are some of you here, you have always experienced visions and you always see them come to pass. The problem is you have never made an effort to sit down and discover that that is how God likes talking to you. So every time you pray, Lord speak to me, he will never come the way you expect him to speak to somebody else. To you, he likes talking to you in dreams and in visions. Now I need to explain uh, that if you're the type of person God prefers talking in dreams and in visions, there are possibilities that you may have a prophetic gift invested in you. Alright? Numbers 12 and verse number 6. I think I'm teaching better than you're shouting amen. Numbers 12 and verse number 6. The Bible says God is speaking to Aaron and Miriam. And he says, and when he heard, uh, number, Numbers 12 and verse 6. Yes. Hear my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a what? And what? Will speak to him in a what? People that are prophetic giftings dream a lot. They see visions a lot. Visions are simply images that constantly run through your mind. So let me explain a vision. Some of you, whenever you pray, something flashes. You, you see someone, nani kama anakurudia, anakurudia. And every time you see them, unasikia kama there is a burden in your heart to pray for them. So that's how God prefers to talk to you. If not so, he may flash an image, whether it's a car and other things. So what now do we do? If God speaks to you possibly through images, the next thing you do is to pray for the gift of interpretation. Please give me an amen. Okay, so we've talked about the mental senses, which are three. That's a fast way. I'm talking like this so that I want to go one by one because there are people who are learning something. A second dimension is through your tongue. God can speak through your speaking. Some people, when you open your mouth to pray, God is speaking to you. Are you following me here? In 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 and verse number 13, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 13, the Bible says, if any among you pray in tongues, let him pray that he may interpret. If any among you pray in tongues, let him pray that he may interpret. Let me ask you, are all tongues to be interpreted? No. But what he actually is trying to tell us is that there is a tongue that needs interpretation. In the classes of tongues, there are five of them. I hope you are with me. 
There are five expressions of tongues. So let me break it down. In your Bible, there is a gift of speaking in diverse tongues. First Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 8 going downwards. And there is speaking in other tongues. Speaking in other tongues, according to Mark 16 and verse 17, is a sign that you are a believer. So one of the signs to show that you are a believer is that there is a language you will begin to speak. We all speak mother tongue, including our national language. Nationally, it is called mother tongue. So if I went to a nation like America, when they would ask me, what is, our, what is your language? I would not tell them my language is Luya, Kikuyu, or whatever. My language nationally is Kiswahili. So that is my mother tongue. Now, if we all talk mother tongue, a Russian talks his mother tongue, an American in English talks his mother tongue. Are you still here? It means there must have been another tongue that was there earlier on. So when you read Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you will notice that there was a language that existed previously. Then in Genesis chapter 11, when man tried to build a tower to ascend to God, God descended and scattered them using different languages. So mother tongue began in Genesis 11. So which means the language which was there in Genesis 1, I hope you're with me here, Genesis 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 was called a father tongue. The restoration of Genesis 2 language, Genesis 3 language, happened in the book of Acts chapter number 2. When the Holy Spirit was poured among them, they began to speak as they were enabled by the Spirit of God. That was no longer a mother tongue. That's why he says in the Bible, some speak in tongues of men and others tongues of angels. So in the spiritual world, they are tongues we all talk. When we will all die, we will go to heaven for those of us that are born again properly. And by the time we will arrive, we will meet people of different nationalities and different languages my question is in, in heaven there what language will you talk you cannot talk to a russian yokikuyu you cannot talk to i i, I hope i'm talking to somebody here you cannot talk to an indonesian yoluya there is a language so by the time we meet you will notice you will crack it masote protoloko and they will answer you in the same because we will all be under one government and one language please give me a louder amen right here it's called the language of the Holy Ghost. That's why if you come from a place that doesn't believe in speaking in tongues, read your Bible. Quote for me the book of 1 Corinthians 14 and tell me, Pastor, Paul discourages we shouldn't speak in tongues in public. Read the last verse. He says, prophesy. And towards the end, he says, and discourage not speaking in other tongues. So in other words, Paul did not exactly write that chapter telling people not to speak in other tongues. His idea was he had a problem of people come up, for example, to Wasabi CV in I'll go and explain that we are in a service like this. Now, Alipuka two in tongues. Now there is no interpretation. Mwingine na Alipuka no interpretation. So he wasn't saying don't pray in tongues. Let me use an Old Testament example. In the Old Testament, you will see the Bible talk about people who are prophesying. It says Samuel was leading people, and as he stood, they were all prophesying. Or another example, it would say Saul met prophets and prophesied together with them. Now the word prophecy means to predict the future. Are you hearing me? Now, if all of us are predicting the future, that is confusion. So the original interpretation of the word prophesy among them when there were many was the word speaking in tongues. So there were moments in the Old Testament that people spoke in other tongues. But you as a believer in the New Testament, that is your right. It's a language you must receive. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor it is your right. Turn to the other one, tell them again, neighbor, it is your right. Now, let me go deeper. So another theological argument would appear that pastor, there is the second part, the gift of diverse tongues. Shouldn't people desire it? Yes, the gift of diverse tongues, you must desire. But speaking in other tongues, you receive it by faith. If you hear me say, I hear you. And if you want to be filled, you will be filled today. It's the simplest thing. See, it's as easy as when you got saved. It's as easy as that. Now, speaking in diverse tongues is where there are five expressions. Number one, oh my God, my time. Amen. Number one expression is prayer tongues. Please write it down. Prayer tongues. Prayer tongues are the common ones that we all exercise. The energy God gives us and every one of us find a grace to pray in that language. Number two, second expression of tongues is what we call worship tongues. They are people who God usually gives songs through tongues. So you come into a dimension of prayer and you begin to sing to God in a different language. Oh, your amen needs to be louder right here. I used to go to a church called VFCC in Nairobi. 
In VFCC, the chief praise and worship leader was a white lady called Hilda. The one that was an assistant used to be called Betty. There was a time Hilda began to sing in tongues while leading the service. And Betty came and picked it up and interpreted it in the language we all understood. As we all began to sing in that language, people were falling in the Holy Ghost right there. A man of God had come to Nairobi. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Jesse, Sav Jerry Savelle. Jerry Savelle came to Nairobi. He was hosting a meeting uh, back in KICC. While the worship was going on, just before he would stand up to preach, all of a sudden, every other thing went quiet. The keyboardist was left playing. But while the keyboardist was playing, it was a bit abnormal. His style of playing changed. It was as though he was playing a song. So the man of God just waited. He told everyone, keep quiet. He told him, keep on playing. Then he interpreted what he was playing in the language people understood people fell down under the power of god so there is worship tongues you can find it in first Corinthians 14 number four number three there is what we call tongues of intimacy where god permits you to pray a tongue that is connected to god it's a discussion tongue so you come to a place whereby it's not that you're just praying muscle 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 no you enter a dimension where and god answers you and god answers you in the same language and you hear him answer you at that dimension it's a level you can enter don't just lock yourself to re, 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 mama, mama, baba, baba. If you lock yourself to that, you won't go far. There is a place you allow yourself to ascend, then you settle. Pilia Ali Aanto. And he talks. Ali Asoto Loko. It's as though you're asking him question. Imandia Laka. Because you are this guy, you are tired of what you've gone through. So now you are settled, daddy. Come here. Take a seat. Let's talk. Kapa Natakatuonge. Nimeomba breakthrough. So sit here. So at that point, you begin, Malika Naka, why am I having to go through this? In that language of the spirit, your mind will begin to tap into it. Why am I going through it? But you're talking in that tongue. Because if there's a language God cannot ignore, it's not the one you pray with your understanding. It is the one you pray with your spirit. Because that is the Holy Ghost praying through you, the will of God to the Father. Please give me an amen. So you have to learn to ascend. Go beyond mommy, mommy, baba, baba. Come to a place you settle in your tongues. Are you following me? Then there's a fourth expression called war tongues. Tongues of warfare. Now that is where you will notice that sometimes when you're praying, Roko Pashalaka, you enter a place, you feel like your tongues are breaking. Bandoloko, Rikatalakata. Every time you begin to pray like that, you will feel like something is breaking. Jesus rebuked demons using tongues. He met a girl that was dead in the book of Mark chapter number five. And he called the dead girl back to life speaking in tongues. He met a man that was dumb, Mark chapter number 7, and could not also hear. And he rebuked the spirit of deafness by speaking the word. So he knew how to rebuke and address even demons using tongues. Remember, the Bible says some speak in tongues of angels. So, which means angels enjoy or listen to a certain language. Could he? Please, if you hear me, say I hear you. But there is a fifth expression of tongues which I wanted to major on. Which are what we call tongues of prophecy. Now that is what Paul says. If any among you pray in tongues, let him pray that he may interpret. And amazingly, some of you sometimes when you're praying and you have this mind, you're five minutes after. I said, let me read the scripture again. First Corinthians 14, 13, okay? So you're praying that God will speak to you after you have forgotten that there's a place you reached. Ramasoko Toloko. And then your tongues change the gear. That gear that changed was actually prophecy God was speaking. God was giving you a prophecy. The problem is you have no grace to interpret. So the prophecy bypasses. When the Bible says pray that you shouldn't, it doesn't mean that I pray in tongues and another person will rise up to interpret. That is part of it. But part of it is that there is a language I pray and I can also interpret. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor that grace is on here. So God can speak to you through your tongues. In my small experience, just come. Sometimes when I hold people like this and I begin to pray, as I am opening my mouth, there are words I pass and immediately I know that that word was a prophecy for him. So learn to master. There are times you enter into prayer, the words you are saying is actually God telling you something. You have to take a notebook and quickly write it down. Give me an amen. The third way is through touch. God can speak to you. There are people he likes talking to them through touching them. Through touch. Some of you have ever heard a man of God say, there's somebody on my right. 
your uh, ribs are in pain. Have you ever seen that? Somebody here, your left leg is in pain. Somebody here, there is a war on top of your head. Now, part of it is not that the man of God had a voice. No, no, no. Part of it is that by the time I stand up, I have sensations on me. I feel my hand feeling like it is broken. And I know there's somebody here who has a broken hand. So when I open my mouth and I say, whoever you are, receive your healing in your right hand. The person gets healed. Are you, are you hearing me? Some of you have ever gone to the village. By the time you arrived, it is God telling you here there is a spirit of oppression. If you will not rise up and pray against it before you settle, that demon will deal with you at night. Please give me an amen right here. When you have ever gone to even a church or even a place, now king here, miguzi komzito. But you feel your legs are heavy. It's symbolic of the fact that there's stagnation in that area. So God can use touch as a way to speak to you. Why am I talking all these things? Because I'm hoping to reach every one of you in your different areas. Some of you, you wake up as you are praying, your eyes are burning. God is simply trying to tell you, I want to revive your vision. I want to revive your vision. You are in the church service like this as worship is going on or as we are releasing declaration, your hands begin to burn. You don't need me to come and tell you that that is a word. That burning of your hands is already symbolic that there is an anointing landed on your hands. That from here, whatever you touch shall begin to work. Am I making sense? I'm hoping you're getting something here. Then there is a dimension of revelation through scripture. God can speak to some people and he likes to speak to some people through revelation. So they may not have a dream. They may not have a vision. They may not even have thoughts. But every time they read the Bible, scripture comes alive. Every time they hear the teaching of the word, at a man of God, it's an indication that God prefers talking to you through scripture. Am I teaching? Are you hearing? <laughs> So learn which one is my area. Which one is my area? Are you still here? Which one is my area? Learn to master. I wish I would talk about dreams. Like for example, some of you here that God has loved to speak to you a lot through dreams. If you are not careful that that is a portal of his voice, then you will begin to have a lot of demonic dreams at a certain season. So you have dreams of people attacking you. You are finding yourself sleeping with people in the dreams. And you cannot be able to stop. Listen, it's the enemy who knows that that is a portal God uses. But you have not yet discerned. So the enemy uses the same portal against your destiny. In such a case, you wake up. You put your hands on your head. You address that spirit. Because the scripture is clear in the book of Daniel that the Lord wrote on my head. Go read it in Daniel chapter number 7. God was writing on the head of Daniel. Oh, come on, somebody talk to me. Shout aloud, amen, right here. Why am I taking you through this entire journey? Because this is how God speaks. Number two, the second last point is small, still voice. God can speak to your inner man, your quiet inner man. Are you hearing me? And lastly, God can also speak to you through an audible voice. Come on, I'm going to I'm about to give you a miracle. It's not your neighbor. You literally had God's voice. Can I hear an amen? amen. Am I boring you? Are you getting something? <laughs> so what I'm simply trying to explain here, I'm taking all this time because it's easier for me to pray for you when you've now been able to understand that what is my dealing? God prefers a certain watch. That God likes coming to do business with me at 3 a.m. So what do I do? I take advantage of that time. Because it is then that God will talk to me. Please give me a louder amen right here. That I've noticed 12, I don't sleep. So what do I do? Let me drag myself to the sitting room. Let me intercede and pray. Because it is then that the heavenly voices will begin to descend upon me. Are you following me right here? If I discern my moments, then it is easy. But I also must discern the way God prefers talking to me. I shouldn't compare myself with you. I'm not a dreamer. We have one of our daughters in our church. That lady sees visions and dreams. And they're accurate. I remember one time she gave me one. And in three days, exactly as she saw it, it came to pass. Three days. Now she can be with you here, even seated amongst us here, and tell us details. She sees angels, that lady. That lady would tell you things that sometimes you would even wonder, what are you seeing? Are you understanding me? But now I know that is not my area. So I'm not interested in that area. I know God prefers, I've forgotten, convictions. Write it down. In my case, for example, I have very heavy impressions. Very heavy impressions apart from other areas which I also have. So sometimes when I pray, God can move me in a particular direction. And when I feel the energy there, I know this is God's will. 
I know this is the voice of God. So what I'm simply saying is master it. And I finish by declaring here that you will master your watches. You will be strong during your watches. I finish by declaring your ear will be open to hear that voice. You will master the area God prefers to talk to you. May those that dream receive the grace to dream well. If you're here, you've been having bad dreams. Rise up on your feet, please. First of all, let everyone sit down for a while. Rise up. Dreams attacks on you. Quickly stand up. Put your left hand on the head and lift up your right hand. Stretch your hands towards this one, wherever you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be some deliverance that will happen here. I decree right now. Put your left hand on your head. Lift up your right hand. Left. Right lifted. Left. Not right on your head. Left on your head. Right lifted. Mkono wakushoto kwa kichwa mkono wakulia umeinuliwa. Baba katika jina la Yesu Christo, I pray for people here. That that portal of dreams that you have preferred to talk to them. To do business with them. Can we pray? Please, let's pray. I command that every intrusion every demonic war that has been coming during those moments right now by the spirit of god i break those demonic attacks 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 in the mighty name of the lord jesus i command right now the heavens over you to open up may your dreams become delivered from attacks of the enemy may your dreams find clarity right now i pray for you in the mighty name of jesus that you are receiving the grace to interpret with precision the dreams that the father has over your life and as i stand here with the oil on my head i command every confusion every spell of attack every witchcraft on you to die in the name of jesus to leave you in the name of jesus to release you in the name of jesus receive right now because of my time an impartation take it wherever you are take it wherever you are take it wherever you are thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord let's give the lord a clap and take your seats quickly category number two very quickly just my time i wanted to spend time you 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 sometimes smell things you can even smell you sometimes even smell who can get it as all your discernment in the sense as that cause as a smell stand up on your feet quickly stand up on your feet you, you can smell i'm not talking of chakula manini you can smell there's a sense in you when you enter even now the aspect of touch on your body is usually there stand up very quickly please very quickly stand up quickly stand up quickly we want to ask the lord to quicken that grace thank you lord when was yesterday the first did we hear the declaration of acceleration how of you how many of you began to feel like your feet were lighter after that declaration was made stand up stand up quickly you're part of that group you're part of that group in fact you as you're standing up you're the group which god will prove by testimony that you will walk in acceleration you will be the ones that prophecy will be so effective on you lift your hands lift your hands are you ready so i stand here as a man of god i pray that your discernment level in terms of touch will multiply more than ever before thank you father there it goes there it goes there it goes my time is limited but i feel a transfer there are some of you you feel like something is flowing through your hands there it goes there it goes take it take it take it in the name of jesus take it some of you are feeling like something is touching your chest it's as though there's a hand touching your chest take it take it in the name of jesus take it in the name of jesus take it in the name of jesus come on can we be in prayer receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus yes some of you you're feeling like something is leaving your head there it goes there it goes there it goes in the name of jesus I command you to take it today let everyone stand up because of my time i want us to lift our hands can i pray for your watches right now are you ready i pray for your watches lift your hands i stretch my hands over your head father secure every watch secure the midnight watchers secure the late night watchers secure the early risers 
Secure the mid-morning risers. Secure them, oh God. Right now, I command every spell of heaviness. Please, if you're ready, something will come on you now. I command every spell of heaviness, every dryness that has been working against your watch to leave you right now. Every distraction that continually comes during your time of watches to leave you now, to leave you now, to leave you now, to leave you now. I command it to leave you. Come on, receive now. Receive now. Receive now. Receive now. Now, receive now in the name of Jesus. For one minute, I want you to say after me in the name of Jesus. Say to the authority in the name of Jesus. I redeem my watches. I redeem my watches. I decree now as I stand on this mountain. Every war against my watches. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I command an open heavens. I command an common grace. I command an energy in the spirit to pray, to hear God, to transact in the spirit. Lift up your hands, say in the name of Jesus, my watches are redeemed. My watches are redeemed at midnight, at 3 a.m., at 5 a.m., at 7 a.m., at 9 a.m., at 12 p.m., my watches are redeemed. At 3 p.m., at 6 p.m., at 9 p.m., and at midnight, I redeem my watches. Now, for one minute, I want you to raise a prayer, raise a war cry, because I feel God is telling me to tell you, you can do it right here. There is a revival coming here. I feel a wind blowing in this house. I feel a wind blowing in this house. From the young ones to the old ones. Come on, lift your hands. Don't put down your hands. You are doing business. We are in the 12th midday watch. It's an hour. The Bible says, David says, I will lift up my prayer. At noon time will my prayer ascend to you. I want you to ascend your prayer. This is that hour. Lift your hands. Don't put them down. Lift them up high. Open your mouth and transact. If you are here believing God for an answer, God is already releasing it here. Angels are available right now. Somebody open your mouth, open your mouth. Pray until your neighbor can feel your prayer. Pray until your neighbor can feel the weight of your prayer. Even if you cannot pray in tongues, pray in the language of your understanding. Open your mouth and raise a prayer. I cannot hear you raise a prayer. If you're born again, redeem it. There's a settlement of the Holy Ghost here. The power of God is already here. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. If you're watching, you don't understand what we are doing. I want you to open your mouth to business. We are in the midday watch. Do business. Oh God, hear our prayer. Oh God, revive our hearing. Shede geta ni matoni matoni ba. Rete tere de kandala bakari ama pray. Woo! Lift up those hands. The Holy Ghost is here. I know I'm slightly exceeded, but I just feel the Lord is establishing things. Thank you, Lord. There's fresh oil coming on people here. Some of you can tell it. There's a touch that goes. Oh, my God, there it is. Manda koske ka al ias oli ila et land al os ila and et it al oske ek al as on ila at el aso el os it al at indala at ot ila as oli ea. Prophetic dreams are being revived here. Prophetic dreams are being revived here. El ila on il at at al isk on il at ina. In Asconde, they are people that operated in the gifts of the Spirit. God is reviving them again. God is reviving the gifts of the Holy Ghost in some people here. In Ali is only I hear restoration. In Allah only I hear restoration. They are people God is restoring. God is restoring. Restored marriages. Restored destiny. Restoration in your finances. Whoever you are, receive it now. Whoever you are, receive it now. Whoever you are. Receive it now. Whoever you are, receive it now. Thank you, Holy Ghost.
because I hear families. God is visiting families. Families are represented here. In the month of November, salvation comes to families. Salvation comes to families. Salvation comes to families. Come on, open your mouth. There is a release here. There is a release here. Mandele pa aliato. Rondila kanina na mandalaba. Now I want you to ascend. Go higher. Go higher. Go higher. Let's use two more minutes if you don't mind. You will go to what I am saying, but go higher. Ascend now. Lift your hands. Open your mouth and ascend. Open your mouth and ascend. Open your mouth and ascend. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us through your servants, Lord. Thank you, Father. There is revival in our hearts. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Because you are our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank God for that opportunity. It has been powerful. Why don't you appreciate God? Appreciate God for that powerful session. I know God has spoken to your heart. Put your hand together as you appreciate the Lord. He has been powerful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May God give you grace to master your watches. And there is revival in our hearts. Amen. As we package our gifts and offerings, I know we are going back to our place of work. If you want to remain, you can just remain and just take your time for for prayers. But those who are going to a place of work, we just want to give our gifts, our offerings. If you are using your phones, our pay bill is projected over there. You can write it's either tithe or offering. For those who are using envelopes, we have our good ashes there. Amen. Tomorrow, remember to bring your friend, being on a Friday. Make sure you bring your prayers over here. And then we have books by our pastor outside there. And our father said that we are not going to announce again because we are grown-ups, we are mature. We know how to honor graces. And the man of God has been a blessing to us. At least now, at the end of today, you are able to master your watches. No, it's the spirit of God speaking. Amen. So make sure you just get those books outside there. Now, as you package your gifts, our youth retreat, Nikesho. Najua kuna wale watu the last minute. Nasia tiana pesa. You have money even right now. You have money. Ukona pesa. Lakini unagojia the last minute kesho after lunch hour. Please, kuna budget wako supposed kufanya. Now, at least you know you are supposed to, to be in that meeting. Thank God because our Father has given us an opportunity. See you come at our days. We never used to go for these retreats. But now, Dad has given us an opportunity. Let's go and hear God. Tutapunguza mambo ingine kidogo kidogo hapa na pale. Let's go for that outreach. And you know, I'm talking to you. You have money right now kwa kibeti na kwa simu. Pitia mahali hapo. After kusalimia nansi, Make sure una mwachia pesa mahali hapo and God is going to bless you. Amen. Amen. So I want you to lift your offerings up. I bless you as we go back to our place of work. Almighty God, thank you for speaking to us during this hour. Thank you for using your servant to minister grace to us on how to watch, to watch our watches, oh God. Thank you because you have revived our hearts. That we are not going to slumber. We know that God is speaking to us. Spirit of God, minister to each and every one of us on how to master our watches, oh God. As we give today, we declare that there is an open heaven for each and every one of us. As we are going back to our place of work, minister to us all. For in Jesus' name, we pray and believe. May God bless you. There is another surprise tomorrow.